Good morning everybody, or should I say good afternoon for me. I'd like to say thank you once again. Thank you. Do I ever say anything else but thank you? But I mean it. Thank you very much for your prayers for the trigeminal neuralgia. Well, for me, but about the trigeminal neuralgia. I really would appreciate it if you would continue to pray. It is two o'clock. Now the chances are, without any self-fulfilling prophecy, that I will be fine now till about five o'clock, six o'clock. And then it begins to grab me again. Um, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about it and when I got it. I don't know why really, but I just think you might understand it a bit better, that's all. Well, oh, is that my little doggy behind me? Oh, she scratched, so we won't show you my little doggy behind me. Right. I don't know how long it was probably about 15 years a bit maybe a bit earlier a bit later one or the other and um, one morning you I woke up in bed the way you do and I started didn't have my glasses on started rubbing my eyes as you do just like that And suddenly, it was as if somebody got a big carving knife, stuck it in my eye and twisted it. That is the only way I can describe the pain to this day. And that began a number of years of hell, on and off. Um, It started that I would get this severe electric shock in the side of my face. And I'd get hold of the pillows and I'd hold on to the pillows until they had gone by. And of course nobody knew what it was. And uh, I went to my doctor and he started me off on Tegretol and uh, didn't really do that much for me but <clears throat> the thing is we don't know how bad it would have got if I hadn't been on it really do we um do you know what two dogs on the bed here after I said I wouldn't let the big one on anyway um what trigeminal is is it's a nerve in your brain and I can't explain it the way Kerry could do and Kerry was going to do for me um, but basically I thought I'd just tell it you from my side it's a nerve in my brain which and it's wanting to do it now it jumps and it misses something no it connects with something. Either way, it does something that it shouldn't do. And so you can touch your nose here. And you're down there. And it's all down, literally down. It's the whole side of the head. So I can be talking to you now as I am, ignoring the dogs barking. And without thinking, I can just touch my nose. Off. Flick the side of my face. Wow. Yeah, it can go off. I went on to gabapentin, um, and then I saw this lovely specialist guy who shook my hand when I walked in. 
Oh, it was wielded. Isn't it nice when somebody shakes you by the hand like that? You know, and he said it was the one, it was nice to meet me, you know, and I thought, oh, that's nice. Anyway, big do's and little do's, I went on to some new drugs. Um, and now I'm at the surgery stage. He said to me about three months ago that if these new drugs, which are very expensive, not to me personally, I must add, but to the surgery. Um, if they didn't work, I'd have to have surgery. Now the thing is, uh, I have something else. I have um, sleep apnea and I am in respiratory failure. As well as arthritis and all the other things you don't want to know about. Now, the chest guy says that I can't have surgery. He says I can't either fly and come over and see you lot either. Which, if I had the money, well, hey, there's a couple of you, I'd be right over. But apparently I can't fly either. So, I can't have the surgery. Unless they can do it by local anaesthetic. Now, to be honest, I don't fancy them drilling into my head while I'm awake. Um, they have to put, there are two things they can do. They put a piece of Teflon between certain nerve things in my head. I mean, I thought Teflon was what you coated your frying pan with. Or else the other thing is to put a balloon. Now that way they either go through your nose or else they go through a little cutting at the back of your head behind your ear. Now I shouldn't have done that. You see I stroked that then and I just thought I'd just remind you I'm underneath it. Um, now, with a balloon, uh, decompression or not compression, I don't understand what it is, um, I can be left paralysed down the side of my face. Now, there are drawbacks with all things I know. Um, but at the moment, I don't know where I'm going. I really don't know where I'm going. Why does it come? Nobody knows. It's supposed to come in people older than me, actually. But um, why it goes away, nobody knows. Your brain does not recognise stimulation between happiness and sadness. So you can ball in your eyes out and it stimulates your brain. You can be happy, it stimulates your brain. You can be doing other things, it stimulates your brain. But it doesn't recognise the difference. So when my first daughter, my Tina, was pregnant, she'd had a three disappointments. And she finally got this little baby growing inside of her. And that was the worst summer I had. I was in bed the whole summer, playing really soft, gentle music the whole time. At a certain level, I couldn't eat anything. I think I'd lose weight, wouldn't you? And uh, I used to look at this picture of this child growing inside of her and think, yes, it's just like cauliflower, or it's just like squashed tomatoes, anything bar for that bit of excitement. Because as soon as I looked at it, I thought, oh, my babe, wow. 
so about three weeks ago it started again just a little flash here and there and I thought oh Harry hmm. until about three days ago I went back Now I don't want it anymore. I know that we're not given anything we can't cope with. How do these people which enjoy pain... Do you know, I feel as if I'm opening myself up here, but I wish someone would tell me how you enjoy it. There's a scripture which says about uh, being joyful. Uh, you know, these bad times. I am trying. <laughs> I really am trying. Um, so I just wanted to tell you about trying to get a new round and how I just wanted you to see it from a person's point of view. You know, not from something in a book. In a book it looks terrifying. It's supposed to be the worst pain, you know, other than childbirth, or even more than childbirth. Well, you tell that to a man. What does he know that feels like? <laughs> you know, it's a nerve pain. And so a nerve pain is when all your nerves get on it. But then, because you have pain, you get on edge. So that puts even more on it. So it means everything else closes down and it clamps down hard. So you're trying to take pills and you can't take pills because your throat shuts up. Yeah, I've upped the pills to the highest I can go. You up one of the pills, Tegrasol, I think it is. Carmazepine, is it, in your language? In anybody's language, I suppose. And that poisons you. I can't be on my machine at night because it sets off my face. So I have a build-up of carbon dioxide. But my Lord says that he's got a purpose for me, and I believe that. So please continue to pray. Might come back later yet, I don't know. I feel as if I should grab every bit of time I can. You know. I want to show you something. I've shown it to Jules already. I have a clicky bar. And it is so good because I can just... I don't need to stretch and I don't need to hurt myself in any way, shape or form. And this is all down to Becca. Hello my darling. My straight jacket. Uh, 70 something. 72. Whatever. You know Becca. And when she got her new machine, she said she had a clicky bar. And our kids said, oh, I think I've got one of them somewhere. So we went, well, she went looking. She didn't find it. Guess who found it? And I didn't go looking. <laughs> so, on the count of three, I'm going to say, I'm going. But I love you very much. Bye.